tonight. Areas of interest in the Indian Ocean on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for November 15th. No new storms are active right now, we're just left with the old remnants of old storms. Nicole, what's left of it, just passing by Ireland right now, heading northwards, and Yamaneko heading to the north northeast, out towards the Aleutian Islands. In the Atlantic Ocean, there are no areas of interest either at this moment in time. We're just dealing with the remnants of Nicole way up there after it made landfall as a hurricane in Florida. Feels like an age ago already since that happened on day 168 of hurricane season. Eastern Pacific similarly quiet with no areas of interest expected in the next five days. Day 185 of hurricane season here. It's had a good run we've seen 16 tropical storms but it doesn't look like we're going to see any more now eastern pacific is pretty much shut down western pacific yamaneko heading off into the sunset off to the northeast didn't last very long only about a day or so uh, no other areas of interest yet but we are monitoring a potential system later on in the forecast period towards the philippine islands we'll watch that a little bit later on Southern Hemisphere, we've got this 40% chance now, area of interest, which will be passing between the Cocos and Christmas Islands, um, out in the eastern part of the South Indian Ocean. Um, 40%, so chances are rising. North Indian Ocean, we've also got a 20% there as well. Latest satellite imagery shows us the Atlantic Ocean right now, and you can see how it's looking there. Um, still, we've got a lot of... Uh, cloudiness but not much in terms of organized tropical cyclones and that's the way it's going to stay for the foreseeable hopefully although we could be eyeing down in the southern caribbean maybe one or two late season activities eastern pacific looking like this as well quite desolate just a few storms blowing up in the intertropical convergence zone but really no signs of proper life there and it remains dry along the west coast of north america Western Pacific looking like this. You can see a little bit of rotation possibly or certainly storms blowing up there in that little disturbance there in the very low latitudes. That could be the thing to watch through the southern Philippines in the next week. We haven't marked it as anything, uh, but it could be a significant rainmaker locally along the Philippine Islands. Into the Indian Ocean, uh, there's still not much to see yet either, but we are seeing the beginnings of these two systems on either side of the equator in the eastern Indian Ocean. Uh, the first one to the west of Indonesia, you might just about spot it there in the north, still not seeing much just yet. Australian region, there's thunderstorms blowing up across the northern parts of the country, across the uh, Northern Territory and towards the Cape York Peninsula. But apart from that, the uh, South Pacific and the Australian region looking pretty quiet. Um, a few storms just blowing by, just past Fiji and then onto Samoa. Sea surface temperatures look like this. It looks like they are fading out just a little bit more in the Eastern Pacific today, but they're still fairly warm, 28 or 29 degrees off the coast of Mexico. Maybe a late season surprise, but it doesn't look like it. The Atlantic remaining very warm in the Caribbean Sea, a late season surprise more likely there. And in the Western Atlantic out to sea, uh, still decent temperatures heading up towards those high latitudes. You might still get non-tropical lows that spin up and try to become tropical cyclones in the late season here. Indian Ocean looking fairly uh, uniform really around 28-29 degrees Celsius and extending itself southwards right now. The Western Pacific pushing close to 30 degrees in the Philippine Sea and actually reaching it in the equatorial regions and into the South China Sea, still looking okay there if you're further, wet, further east, uh, but cooler temperatures to the west and north. Still good enough, as long as storms don't end up near Hong Kong, where the temperatures are just about falling below the threshold now. Anomalies, it is above average in the Western Pacific as well for any potential systems. Eastern Pacific around average, and the Atlantic way above average, especially in the subtropical zone and in the Western Caribbean, which are the areas that we could be looking at for late season activity here if we do get anything more. Uh, so 
keep watching. And this is the oceanic heat content, still the hot spot there south of Jamaica and on the uh, western part of the Caribbean Sea there, very high OHC as well. Looking towards the western Pacific, you can see there as well, uh, still decent amounts, but it is starting to decrease a little bit. And on the eastern part of the Pacific there as well, one or two little spots remaining. Let's check the computer models for the next five days on the GFS. This is what it's showing in the Indian Ocean, the northern part of the Indian Ocean on the left-hand side. That system developing some rotation, very broad, as it starts to develop and moves westwards, northwestwards towards the coast of India. Also check out right at the end of that five-day period, that system that does move through the Philippines does become a tropical cyclone at the end of that loop, or nearly so, certainly attains storm force winds. So that could be something to watch, and I think it might get a percentage at the next update. Here's the, in, the southern Indian Ocean, the other system that we're watching there. You can see it wrapping up a little bit, but it takes its time. Uh, still not a tropical cyclone there, and it might just, there it is, just nearly pretty much getting there around day four to day five. That's occurring well to the southwest of Java, Indonesia, and moving out towards open waters mainly. Uh, the Cocos, Keeling Islands, and possibly Christmas Island might get something from this system, although I doubt it will be very much. Also in the next seven days we're pointing out the southern Caribbean region where there's some tropical moisture that could cause some very high amounts of rainfall. In this seven day period from the GFS you can see how it really starts to increase towards the end of that period. Here it comes around about now as a disturbance moves up towards the northwest and will deliver huge amounts of rain uh, up towards 16, 17 inches there which is an enormous amount over 400 millimeters um, in parts of Nicaragua on towards Honduras with decent amounts there as well. Uh, whether this will become a tropical cyclone or not we'll find out in the next slide when we look at the moderate range but at the moment it looks like it will definitely be a localized rain issue possibly on the horizon next week. Into the longer range then, day 5 through 10 in the GFS, what's it going to do with that system? Well, lo and behold, it becomes a tropical storm and moves through there northwestwards towards the Western Caribbean, towards the Yucatan Peninsula there as a weak depression. It continues on and dies off very quickly. So that would be no surprise if the Atlantic decides to throw another one at us because it seems to be like that, this basin, in the late season. Um, I don't know whether that will happen or not, but the GFS showing some signals there in the medium range. Indian Ocean, that system, that storm eventually makes landfall uh, just uh, in Tamil Nadu, I think that is, near Chennai. And further east in the Western Pacific, a system there as well. Probably a tropical storm that eventually moves into Vietnam. Watch that sequence again, there it is. Well, just about gets enough curvature for a brief tropical storm spin up there before weakening as it reaches the coast of Vietnam. So that will be something to watch in that moderate range. And down in the southern hemisphere, looking towards the Australian region again, watching that system that we were looking at earlier crumble and uh, decompose. And then there's another one that forms uh, just off the coast of Indonesia and potentially becomes another tropical cyclone, a very broad one developing right at the end of that 10 day loop there. And watch closely, you'll see it actually develops north of that line of islands. I know that that sea has a name, I think it's the Flores Sea, and then eventually moves down into the Australian region. That's all the serious stuff done with. You can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store. We have all of our usual items as well as full season and individual, oh dear, individual storm animations on request at any time. And are still waiting for Hone t-shirts, still available as long as we're waiting for Hone. And in the silly range then, that's day 10 through 16, looking at the North Indian Ocean. Another system decides to form on the GFS charts, and a stronger one at that, becoming a more mature cyclone, and gets to Category 1 hurricane equivalent status, and eventually makes a run and actually stalls close to Visakhapatnam on the east coast of India. That would be interesting, but not out of character for a late year uh, North Indian Ocean. Uh, we can often get uh, activity like this in the late season, although a little bit late as far as the late season is concerned. Usually it's October into November, but you never know. 
Australian region, there's that system, a very broad tropical cyclone, very messy, moving inland, makes landfall near Exmouth, I think it is, and then down towards the southeast uh, over the Western Australian outback mainly. Um, so whether that happens or not, GFS have been showing that in the ultra long range consistently for a few runs now, uh, but that is still a very long way out. We're, we're talking probably the 27th, 28th of November there. That's still 13, 14 days away. Speaking of 14 days away, hurricane week, 13 days away now on the 28th of November. And that will have a uh, full week of activities, festivities and uh, educational moments and documentary pieces and our charity fundraiser Force for Good on Sunday, December the 4th. On November 15th, 2007 though, we had Category 5 Cyclone Cedar, which was eventually going to make a catastrophic landfall in Bangladesh. A very powerful and destructive storm that I think has been forgotten in some quarters. We also had Cyclone Guba in the Coral Sea, another forgotten storm actually. Um, one of the strongest early season storms I think in that particular area. And Lee Ariel, which was uh, getting its double barreled name because it was crossing 90 degrees east on this day. Well then, back to this year and the next name on the Atlantic naming list is Owen. Still a chance we might get it. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Seymour. Vanishingly thin chance we'll see that now. And in the Central Pacific, we are still waiting for Hone. And only, goodness only knows what the chances are of seeing that one. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Pakar, and we'll have to get a new uh, screen of names there. And in the North Indian Ocean, our next name is still Mandus. 88 storms have formed so far in 2022, who will become number 89 and 4 away from the annual average. Australian region next is Darien, the Southwest Indian Ocean, Chaniso, and in the South Pacific it will be Harley. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin, we'll be back again tomorrow night. <laughs>